Gun Grinch, James Reeves here. Last week, I made the top five best guns of 2023 video. Let's talk about the top five worst guns of 2023. Number five, and this one's easy, the Stink AK Bullpup Kit, Stuff and Things, Inc. This is a kit that I saw for the first time at TriggerCon 2023. I wasn't impressed with it when I saw it for the first time a few months ago, but now that time's passed and I've been able to think about it a more or less disgusted with it. This is a 3D printed nylon kit that allows you to convert many popular AK models from functional AKs into super compact and possibly non-short barrel rifle AK pistol things. With this kit, you can take a perfectly good AK, convert it into an even less useful and worse to shoot weapon platform for only three or 400 bucks. You get a smaller package by replacing pesky design features from the original Kalashnikov like a buttstock and durability with one of those famously good bullpup triggers and potential criminal liability. Gotta say those guys at Stink, they're good sports, good sense of humor, and even though this is a terrible idea, I honestly hope they sell thousands of them. By the way, I love the sticker that's included with the box. If somebody wants to find this bullshit, where? This is made by Stuff and Things, Inc. And you can find us at stincusa.com. Come see us at Stink USA. Truly an abomination. Number four, as usual, the controversy slot because you don't lead in with a fan favorite gun, but you don't put it at number three either. I told myself I was going to pull the video with the most dislikes from TFB TV in 2023 and make that the number four gun for the controversy slot. Fortunately for us all, the most disliked video on TFB TV Showtime is the PSA STG 44. First of all, stop booing me because you know I'm right. Yes, I know it's super popular. And I think this video is probably our most viewed SHOT Show video we've ever made, seriously. But 90% of the potential market for this gun fits into one of two categories. One, people who won't be able to afford it when it drops for at least $2,000, probably, but that's just a guess because PSA won't give us a price. Unfortunately, everything went up in price. These are going to go up in price. Do you have a ballpark for what the PSA version is going to cost, just approximately? I really don't. Um, I know that there are like 14 lawyers who would yell at me if I said something. And or two, people who haven't shot an STG-44 to realize what a boring piece of shit it is. I get it. It was revolutionary when it came out. It's the grandfather of assault rifles. It was ahead of its time nearly a century ago. But if that's true, then why does every Alabamian I know own a gun that was designed only a few years later by Mikhail Kalashnikov? But I've seen maybe four functional STG-44s in my 20 years of working in the gun business. Kind of terrible. <laughs> kind of fun-ish. Fun-ish. Kind of awful. Please share your hypothetical cope theories in the comments below as to why that is. But maybe, maybe, crazy theory here. Maybe it's because the STG-44 kind of sucks. If you disagree with me, that's okay. But if your experience with the STG-44 is limited to using it in Battlefield or Call of Duty, you have to start your comment with... I'm just pulling this out of my ass, but... Now, for those of us who can manage to pull down a double-digit score in the Wonderlick, we see this for what it is, pure novelty for gamers and Veraboos, and there's nothing wrong with that. I have strong opinions about guns, but contrary to popular belief, I'm not egotistical enough to think that my opinion is the only correct opinion, and for that matter, if this re- defecation of the STG-44 means people are spending money in the gun space, having fun doing it, then get after it, Bubba Jurgen. And I can still hate this idea and be impressed with the strides PSA has made in about a decade. They've gone from building meme tier AR-15s to becoming a legitimate gun powerhouse. I reviewed the PSA Rock 57 this past year, dollar for dollar. Hard to not call it one of the best guns of 2023, even if mine was missing roll pins in the frame when I bought it. So why was this video the most thumbs down? Well, one, because it was the most popular video we've made on TFB TV Showtime, so it simply had the most dislikes on pure volume. Two, that doesn't change the fact that there are a lot of people who are pissed off that Hill and Mac, who PSA is collaborating with for this, has promised this gun to the market for the greater part of a decade at less than $2,000 without 
ever delivering in spite of accepting down payments. And then uh, these coming out later on this year? Yes, yes, we are absolutely launching these this year. Summarize, the STG44 does nothing that can't be done better by anything in PSA's current catalog at one-fifth the price, but if, if, if they ever release these things, I bet they're going to sell literal truckloads of them. That's great. I just wanted to bitch a little bit because I'm butthurt about having to defend an unpopular opinion. Speaking of shit that doesn't need to be remade, Smith & Wesson, baby, what is you doing with these kel clone guns? Last year, SW semi-cloned the KSG shotgun with the Bullpup Double Tube M&P 12 shotgun. This year, they copy kel homework with the folding pistol carbine and the M&P 22 Magnum, which are startlingly close to the Sub-2000 and the PMR-30 made by kel -Tec. Don't take this the wrong way. Because I'm not saying I don't like kel designs or their guns. I've met George Kelgren. I interviewed him. The man is a genius. He's passionate. Some of his designs are brilliant and creative. I unironically own a Sub-2000. I honestly don't think that the FPC is really that bad from Smith & Wesson. But you just kind of wonder who's sitting around thinking, you know what? You know, we can really shake shit up in 2023. Let's copy a bunch of kel designs. It's a bit like the DeLorean of guns, isn't it? It's a neat idea, it's fun, but it's not really that practical. And I, I gotta say, I wonder where John DeLorean got all those crazy ideas from. But the most indelible impression the public has of John DeLorean is that of Maverick Automotive Genius, who, desperate to save his failing car company, became involved in what he alleges was a government-engineered cocaine deal. Now, unlike DeLorean, Papa George has managed to make his company extremely successful, and it seems like Smith & Wesson might be piggybacking off of that success a little bit. It just seems uncharacteristic of one of America's oldest classic gun manufacturers, they're publicly traded. For all I know, they are raking it up for shareholders by ripping off poor old George's concepts. But for myself, personally, I'd rather see the manufacturing time dedicated to Smith & Wesson's incredible modern revolver designs, which I love, like more Scandium stuff or something. Maybe refining its line of AR-15s into a more structured lineup, like you got your consumer-grade AR-15s on one end, and then like mil-spec plus duty-grade ARs to compete with BCM or... Novesky or something on the other end with a clear delineation between the two instead of a bunch of random fair to middle and AR bullshit. Hell, Smith & Wesson made a good 1911, right? Everyone and their dogs make it a 2011 right now. You would think they might be able to dominate that space if they did it and it wouldn't be out of character. Nothing wrong with going to Hustler Barely Legal with your college buddies, just like there's nothing wrong with copying kel -Tec. But when a respected traditional manufacturer does it, a bit like your high school football coach being called to the main stage. It's just kind of weird. Even if you do stick around and watch through at least the first verse of Pony by Genuine. Okay, worst guns, number two. I feel bad for this one because I love my boy Gordon Bond. Gordon, charismatic leader of Bond Arms, probably the most successful and historically significant dirger manufacturer in the history of firearms, but Gordon must have gotten a hold of John DeLorean's power lunch when he designed the 4570 Cyclops, or as I call it, arthritis in a box. Let's talk about the 4570. Monster long-range cartridge, also known as the 4570 government. 45 comes from the diameter of the bullet, 70 comes from the volume of black powder, traditionally 70 grains of black powder. Grain weight of the bullet, typically between 300 to 405 grains, or roughly two to four times the weight of your average nine millimeter round, traveling up to twice as fast as that nine millimeter round. Basically, this is a round designed for large heavy rifles. This is a round used to take down the big five in Africa. This is a round you shoot on Saturday and feel on Sunday. This is not a round for a pistol. Now that hasn't stopped zany companies like Magnum Research putting it in the notoriously brutal BFR, our biggest, finest LOL revolver, which is purely a meme of a gun. But then Bond Arms has to up the ante and put a literal buffalo hunting bullet into a 28-ounce Derringer with a 4-inch barrel. This is literally 
the dumbest gun ever made. This gun is the colonic irrigation of firearms, although to be fair, I'm pretty sure I would rather have a running water hose jammed up my ass than peel off around with the Cyclops. Finally, the number one worst gun of 2023. There are a whole lot of you who are really, really upset. I mean, really upset that I put a high point in my top five best guns of 2023. I went with the High Point JXP-10 because it was the first successful implementation of the so-called Yeet Cannon package of features from High Point. Many of you remember several years ago, I gave you all a preview into High Point's next generation flagship 9mm handgun, which was unnamed at the time. High Point's well known for manufacturing budget firearms like the High Point C9. However, the C9 is low capacity, holding just eight rounds in the magazine, big, chunky, unergonomic, poor sights, but importantly, cheap and reliable. High Point wanted to keep this gun cheap and reliable, but they wanted to fix all the other stuff. So the next generation High Point was going to include better slide serrations, better interchangeable grip panels, better ergonomics, better sights, also interchangeable, optics mounting solutions, threaded barrels for suppressors, and the introduction of a 10 round double stack magazine. High Point showed me the prototype of this gun back at SHOT Show 2019, nearly five years ago. Tons of excitement. High Point even hosted a Bodie McBoatface style competition, allowing its customers to nominate and vote for the name of this new gun, which unfortunately ended up being the Yeet Cannon. But we could have seen that one yeeting from a mile away when you let High Point fans be in charge of high point things. Anyways, after waiting for over four years, finally a production copy of the Yeet Cannon makes it over to TFB TV. Couldn't have been more pumped until I got it out to the range. I get a malfunction right away. Super, super, super crushing. We were also using a 150 grain Federal Syntec, kind of a heavy round using a polymer jacket. So I didn't think much of it My copy was flat out unreliable. We tried different types of ammo. We tried it with a suppressor. We tried it without a suppressor. It just wasn't working for us. So I contact HiPZ. They send me a bag of new magazines. We tried the new magazines, about a half dozen of them. We tried the old magazines, gun still unreliable. So we send the gun itself back to Ohio. They send us another one. We have the exact same issues. In other words, for me personally, this is a gun I can't believe I'm saying out loud right now that I was excited to get my hands on for years. High Point takes almost a half decade to release the Yeet Cannon, and I am entirely unsatisfied with the outcome. And look, for all I know, they've gotten all these issues worked out between now and then, or maybe I had the only two unreliable Yeet Cannons ever made, but you have to look at it from my perspective as somebody who reviewed two copies with a half dozen different magazines. I don't understand why High Point didn't just take the C9 and implement the Yeet Cannon features like it did with the JXP-10. Like, why'd you have to with the formula just to squeeze two more rounds of capacity out of this gun? If I had to choose between a high point C9 with the Yeet Cannon feature set in 2019, reliable, cheap, versus waiting until 2023 to get a less reliable version of the same gun, all for an additional two rounds, you can imagine which one I would think would be the better idea, at least commercially speaking. Anyways, I hope they got the kinks all worked out of this gun, but all that build up with the complete and utter disappointment of the launch means that the Yeet Cannon 9mm was the most disappointing gun of 2023 for me personally. Although I do love my boys at High Point and I'm still standing by that JXP-10 as one of the top five guns of 2023. So what did you think the worst guns of 2023 were? Tell me in the comments. And what do you think 2024 is going to bring? Well, if you want to know for sure, you can scoot on over to TFB TV Showtime. Go ahead and subscribe there. We upload between 70 and 100 videos every SHOT Show in a couple of weeks. And we only post a couple of them on the TFB TV main channel. So if you want to see all of them, the moment they're put up from the show, make sure to subscribe to Showtime. I'll see you boys in Vegas. Take care.